Okay, so today on the build table, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Now, I haven't talked about it before, but um, I have done quite a few Gundam models. Uh, most of them are from Bandai. Uh, these are a, a great side thing to do, aside from the normal trucks and cars and whatnot that you might get into. I also find, as I am doing now, uh, during the colder times of the year, since I do my... Uh, painting in the garage, my spray painting, uh, rather than trying to uh, fight against <laughs> a uh, cold, cold day with a little space heater in the garage, I come in and I will jump on one of these guys because, as you'll see in a little bit, uh, you, you can get through one of these and you actually can get by with um, no painting, if you so desire. So it's a nice departure if you just want to do a build. Uh, great alternative. But before we get into talking about this guy, you know, I like to ramble on. So be prepared. The rambling will begin. <laughs> well, what I wanted to do was, if you're not familiar with Gundam models, if you've never built one, uh, it is a whole uh, genre within the... Uh, hobby, model hobby community, and you probably will notice if you watch, uh, you know, the, the various uh, model building channels that people have put up out there, sooner or later you always seem to see one of these things pop up in the background, because they're, they're really just so much fun. So, I got into this way long ago with this guy right here. Now, this was a gift from my brother uh, for my birthday, uh, probably in the early 80s. So this guy is about 40 years old, but look at him, he's keeping up. Now, the thing with these Gundam models is they is a lot of functionality. And when you get to the point where you're really enjoying the engineering and the way a kit is designed and the way it comes together, these things are really uh, something else. Now, 40 years ago, of course, as you can see, this guy doesn't move a whole lot. And being that he's old, some of his joints are a little tired. So I'm, I'm going real easy with him. But you can see a uh, pretty, pretty interesting build. So I'm going to put him aside. Now, mind you, Ravel even took a shot at building these. And here is a Ravel one. This was uh, probably mid-80s, whatnot. Um, it, it was a very brief uh, stint they took at this, and it didn't seem to be received too well, I guess, because they uh, didn't approach it the same way Bandai did with a lot of the uh, molding and whatnot. So, for curiosity's sake, we can set that guy over there. Now, moving into modern times, uh, these Gundam kits basically come in three different uh, varieties. You have high grade, master grade, and then the top of the scale is the perfect grade. Now, as you can appreciate from the way I'm moving this guy around, you can see the articulation on these is really impressive, as you can see here. Now, these kits, the high grade kits, these are your basic Gundam kits. They come molded in multiple colors. So this guy came in this sort of off-white, the orange, you got the clear, the gray goes underneath everything. They even give you the translucent piece for his beam saber there and uh, the yellow. So you could actually get through this. The only painting or, and or highlighting you want to call it that I did was going in with my trusty Gundam marker, which I have referred to uh, here and there in other videos for building cars because it comes in handy no matter what. And you can go in there and it's basically a very fine point marker to catch these details. Now these high grade kits, they, they go for about $20 or so. And uh, if you want to, you know, if you're looking for something quick, you could probably sit down and in an afternoon you, you could... Uh, have one of these guys ready to go. So we'll put him aside. Now, when you get to the next step up, this is a master grade. 
And you can see huge uh, increase in the size and complexity of the kit. And as you see, as I move this guy around, the joints have a double articulation. Often there will be pieces moving within pieces. And when you build it, you get to build all of that up. So it makes for a very interesting experience, especially if you have some uh, mechanical curiosity, physiological curiosity, you know, if you're a healthcare person like me. And um, you really can end up with something pretty, uh, pretty fascinating to look at. Of course, you have all these little decals on there. And that has a nice presence when it's all done on the shelf. Uh, again, this comes molded in multiple colors. Uh, this one, the light gray, the white, the gray underneath for the subframe, the dark blue, you know. It's, so on this one, uh, I think the only touch-up painting I did was, again, going in and grabbing some of these little details uh, with my Gundam marker. Otherwise, came with an expansive decal sheet. The decals go on, and there you go. Now, these kits, the Master Grades, it's a pretty big jump in price. You're looking anywhere between uh, $50 and $100, depending on the complexity of the kit. But this will, uh, this will keep you occupied for a pretty good time. Now, everybody builds at different speeds. I happen to build at a little slower pace because I like to really appreciate and, you know, examine and, and, and look at what I'm building. Uh, but for the price, you will get quite a lot of build time and, hey, it, it looks pretty awesome once it's done. The final step going up the scale, and I'm actually going to have to make a little room here. Dramatic pause. <laughs> and uh, not just for effect, but because it is necessary. Because the next step up is perfect grade, and you will get a monstrosity like this, which doesn't even really fit in camera, basically. Now, these kits are really impressive. Um, take the giant sword out of this guy's hand. With these kits, you get fully positionable, bendable fingers. Uh, you know, and again, you, you build all of that up. As you can see, the details on the lake here, really incredible. Uh, you get little pistons that are working in there little pull rods. Um, notice on this one, the armor is even articulated as the joints move. You know, really impressive stuff. So, there we go. And if you're not careful, some of the stuff falls off his hand. <laughs> there we go. So, stand this guy up. Keep his head in camera. And you can see it's quite a lot. Now, something like this, again, uh, depending on the speed that you build, you might, you know, be able to uh, pound one of these out in a couple of days or maybe a long day. Uh, again, I really like to take the time and enjoy my build. So, I spend a couple of weeks when I'm doing one of these, building one of these up. And, uh, you know, wow. Look at what you get. Now, uh, there is a another big jump on price with these for the perfect grade kits. You're looking at $150, $200, uh, somewhere in that price range. So, you know, clearly uh, it's an investment. But these are really incredible. And I, I can't stress enough when you build one of these, I mean, all the little joints, there's a whole inner skeleton that you have to build, then the outer part of the kit, which is what you actually see, goes on top of that, and um, really just amazing, amazing experience. And even though it's a lot to uh, jump in there price-wise, again, I would certainly say worth it. Excuse me while I just adjust the camera here a bit. So, there you go. That's uh, Gundam modeling in a rather quick and tight nutshell. So, we have the history and then what is available today. I've done quite a few of these. Um, and again, you know, you could go crazy with these. You, you could 
airbrush them with all sorts of metallics and all this stuff. And there's some videos out there of people doing really, you know, in incredible, incredible work with these. But personally, I look at them as a way to take a break from all the painting and whatnot that is normally entailed with building. I can just sit down and build and really appreciate all the fine detail, the engineering in the kit, the articulation, the way the kit is designed. And um, after this, I'm going to take a quick break to clean this up and lay out the sprues for the uh, Gundam kit I'm going to build now. And when I lay that out, when we take a look at the parts, you can get a, a better appreciation for what I'm talking about. So I will wrap this up right now. I'm going to put these guys back where they were. And I'll be back in a moment. Okay. Okay, so now that we talked about Gundams in general, let's get back to this guy. This is the Bandai ARX7 Arbalest. Um, there are many genres of, uh, of anime uh, storylines regarding uh, these, these Gundams and all their, their different various forms and combat suits, big scale, small scale in relation to people. Um, I haven't watch them i am not you know all that familiar with them uh there are people who are experts on this and they base their builds and their build choices on the various uh, anime series from japan and um, i'm just gonna say you know it's it's a very big deal over there uh probably as big if not bigger than uh we would know here with um you know marvel and various uh superhero type entertainment genre stuff so uh but you know that being what it is i just tend to pick these things because uh i like the way a particular one looks and you know the color combination and, and the various uh final assembled form so there you go it's a heresy to some of the uh gundam aficionados out there but um oh well <laughs> what can i say so uh, you know, I build for enjoyment, and um, I think that's what everybody should be doing in this hobby. So, um, that's today's lesson. So, put that aside, and let's look at what you get in the box with these. So, because this one is uh, what you would consider basically of the uh, high-grade uh, level of detail, you have uh, a number of sprues, and here you can see... All the different color moldings now I laid them out on paper towel here so it's a little bit easier to see them because some of the moldings are dark and I'm gonna you know pick some of these up so we can get a little bit of a better look at them and they are all lettered these uh, these kits are super organized which is one of the things that's really nice in building them all the sprues are lettered they're clearly marked with uh, part numbers. You get a sprue map and the instructions. So I'll show the instructions, you know, after we go through the uh, part sprues. And um, they, they make these things um, really straightforward to assemble, which is good because when we look through these sprues, um, you're going to see that a lot of these parts, you know, without good instructions, you'd be scratching your head and wondering what in the world you do with these different things. Uh, you know, it's not like a car or a truck or a ship or plane where you look at them parts and after a while, you know, you build the food, you can basically figure out, oh, okay, I know this, what this is, it should go there. Uh, this is a different ball game because um, they are a whole different style of machine, let's say. And what makes them so intriguing to build is the engineering and design detail not just for the kit, but in terms of trying to represent what a functional piece of equipment of this type might constitute in terms of its parts and its assembly. So there you go. All right. So here we go. Here is one of the basic part sprues. You get two of these. And one of the other things you'll notice with these these uh, Bandai molds are just super sharp, super crisp. Uh, there's like no flash. I mean, once in a, a rare while when I'm building one of these, there might be a, a little, uh, you know, 
tagged somewhere, hand, hanging off of a piece, and they, you know, it's really inconsequential. Now, in some other builds, I have talked about, oops, I have talked about placement of gates, which is where the plastic is injected to the actual part. They also, on many of these kits, uh, are pretty strategic where they place those so that you don't have nub marks, which is where you, you know, where you cut to separate from the sprue. They're not often visible or they're covered by another piece. They're, they're pretty well made to go away, um, which is a real handy thing. So here we have another white sprue. Now, some of these sprues you get multiples of. I'm not going to show all the different multiples, uh, but this is really just to, to give you an idea of how well these kits are done. I mean, oftentimes when I'm building these, I, I think, boy, if these guys ever did a, you know, a car or a truck model, um, it, it would be really uh, remarkable. Even look at into detail on those hands. Uh, these are static hands. They're, they're not jointed um, as in the higher grade kits, but still very well done. Now, one of the other interesting things with these kits is they are all press fit. There is really no gluing involved at all. Uh, once in a rare while, I run into a piece that either uh, fits a little loose or, um, you know, is prone to be knocked off, as in the prior segment when I showed you the, the giant perfect gray guy, his little helmet V trim popped off. Uh, there we go. Uh, TV blooper. <laughs> but uh, otherwise, everything just snaps together. And again, in terms of like appreciating a build and engineering that goes into a kit, it really is, uh, you know, something to appreciate when you put one of these together because you realize, wow, the, the engineering and the, the precision of the intricacy, the, the assemblies and everything, it's just, it's, it's really something. So uh, if it sounds like I'm gushing, well, I am, <laughs> um, especially if you go from, you know, like, like an older, uh, model car model that was, uh, you know, re-released and you're, you're working with something that was, uh, designed and tooled, let's say in, you know, 1975 and you're building that today, you realize, oh, you know, some of the parts, you had to guesstimate a little bit how they go together and, and this and that with these, it is, um, like laser precision. So uh, getting back to looking at some of the parts. So we can see again, some of these really nice details. Now you'll notice as well at this point, all the color separation, there's uh, just looking quickly about six or seven different colors molded with this kit. And part of what drives the parts count on these Gundam models is the fact that they are designed so that pieces replace the need for paint so that you can attach things and here is a perfect example we just get a few of these yellow pieces these are a few isolated spots where there's yellow and boom there you go they're molded for you so you don't even have to worry about painting them on some of the high grade kits, uh, yes, you may have to go in and do a, a little bit of painting because you're not getting with the, the smaller scale. It's not big enough for uh, practical parts separation to assemble them. But again, it's it's not too often. Now, this guy I went back to because this is the magic of these kits. Uh, these are polycap pieces. They are a softer plastic as you can see I'm flexing this and these basically constitute the key joints in the kit to provide you with all that super smooth articulation so that uh, they can be posed. Now if you're thinking to yourself uh, oh and actually before I get to that point uh, and last but not least you do get again this is a high grade kit so uh, you're not getting the, the huge decal sheets like you would with the, the master or the perfect grades but you do get this nice foil uh, press on, I guess you would call it. Notice it is a little reflective for the eyes. So these mount on the head and they give it a, a real nice look. Okay. But what I was going to say uh, with these polycaps in terms of 
the posability of these kits, uh, you know, it, it, if it seems like you're building an action figure, you know, as, as it might be referred to, uh, that, that's, you know, pretty close to, to uh, being accurate. However, uh, because you're building a model kit, the amount of detail that is represented is uh, far greater than you would ever see in a, a pre-bought uh, miniature. And you really have to build one to appreciate that fact. So now let's talk about the instructions. Uh, oftentimes they come in booklet form, but with this we have a simple fold out. And of course you've seen some color there. Now it may look a little intimidating with all these little drawings, but as I've said so many times in these videos, a model is a model is a model. You follow your instructions, you build up following your diagrams, and there you go. Now with these, they are particularly uh, inclined toward subassembly because you have arms, legs, you know, a torso, head, uh, a hip assembly, and then you piece this all together as you go through. Um, obviously, if it's your first time doing one of these, I would follow the instructions, you know, step by step as they go along. Uh, after you've built a few of these, and I've built quite a few, <laughs> uh, what I like to do is skip around and do all my sub-assembly. So, um, you know, I'll do a leg, and then maybe I'll do the body, then I'll go back, you know, do an arm, and maybe the head, then go back and do another leg, and I just accumulate my sub-assemblies up top. And then once I have all the various components of the body built, then I put it all together and I have my finished product. So that is a building preference. Do it whatever way you want, as long as you keep in mind that you don't want to miss parts, you know, the usual uh, advisory for skipping around with sub-assemblies. Now on the color pages, uh, I'm showing these more so, so you can see some of the extra functionality. Now one of the things that drew me to this kit is that it is rated as highly posable, meaning the articulation should be uh, quite good. But here on the back, I wanted to show you uh, not only how the kit builds with its uh, various colored pieces to give you a nice final here, but also you can see we have some various weapons for this guy. I uh, even have a folding stock on this uh, shotgun looking type thing. And we have a little scabbard for his uh, combat knife here, which... Uh, Hey, uh, why not if you're, you know, running around in a big old giant armored suit, uh, have a knife. <laughs> but you can see you can stow one of the guns in the back and have the other gun in his hand. You know, you even have here uh, pieces that you can reconfigure. And remember, it's press fit, so you can add and remove. Um, and then you have a little more detail exposed. Uh, I, for one, am not too big a fan of doing these interchanges with the parts, uh, you know, they are press fit. There is a limit to how often plastic pieces will slide together and slide apart and then still want to stay together when you put them back to the way they were. So I tend to build the kit the way I like it to look. And then that's that. Now, if you want to do dioramas, these things are great because of the articulation and the posability. Uh, you know, you, if you want to go crazy, you, you can weather these, you can paint them different colors. You can, it, it really is, um, you know, just, just as endless and open and creative as you would have uh, with a car model. So there you go. That is the Bandai uh, ARX-7 Arbalest. Uh, whatever that's supposed to mean. <laughs> but it means it's going to be a, a good build. So I'm going to get started with this. And when I come back, I'll have, uh, you know, of course, some JPEGs along the way and some sub-assemblies and show off a little bit more how things move and articulate. There we go. <laughs> I'm articulated, too. So uh, that's it. And I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so I thought I'd just 
pop in quick and just show you uh, with any model, you know, it's always a good idea to keep yourself organized while you work. But with these in particular, especially when you're doing one of the smaller ones and they're not, uh, you know, like 20, 30 sprues to deal with, you can just lay them out, have your instructions, and it makes the assembly process really easy. Um, instructions, as you can see, typical pictographic type deal here. Um, like I've said you know, before, and I, I believe I said in the prior segment, models build the way models build. You have your pictures, you have part numbers, and you follow the instructions, follow the arrows, put them together. Now, as I said before, I like to jump around a bit when I build these because it's all based on sub-assemblies. And I will have some pictures following this showing, you know, how some of this builds up. But I thought I would just take a moment to let you see how these things come together and you can see the articulation here pretty impressive now this is where the hip joint is going to be I should have said this is a leg this is the right leg so the body will be here arm and we'll take a look at an arm in a minute and we have highly maneuverable ankle joint foot so you can see with this you could actually do quite a bit of movement there and the hip joint as well we have you know motion in this plane motion in that plane vertical and horizontal so you get both directions and we'll take a look at an arm and here too we have a double articulation at the elbow just like with the knee we have a pivot point here, and this is the shoulder. We have a hand down here that sits on a ball joint, so you get to move that around. And here as well, you can see, let me put all those articulations together, how much you can get out of the arm. So, there we have it. Okay. And here, the shoulder you can see is going to pop in on a ball joint. Now, as far as the hands go, on the uh, simpler kits, you get interchangeable hands. So I already have a weapon hand in there. So gun, knife, whatever, will we'll, we'll slip in there. And they have these open hands, which are nicely molded to give you these little bit of the dramatic pose. And if you ever want to change these, you just pop out one and you pop in the other and there you go so it's ready for a different type of presentation and you're good to go very simple so that is that and the hip assembly you can see here this is the back and here we are with the front those are your hip attachments the body will sit on top of this big ball joint here, and that's how it looks. So, going together well. Now that you have on here, you can see here, and then these areas on the back, the white, those were the uh, foil applique stickers, or labels, whatever you want to call them. Um, but just to give a little bit of color separation that they just could not capture with all the different molded colors and the assembly sequence. So that's that. And later on, I'll go back with my Gundam marker and highlight some of these areas, Gundam marker. But I'll have some slides showing that as well. Okay, so I'm going to get back to work. And in the uh, next time I pop in, after the JPEGs of the assembly, I'm uh, probably going to have a finished guy. So, off I go.
to see the finished product for the Bandai ARX7 Arbalest. Let's take a look. Okay, so you can see he's all built up now. He's got his his weapons and stuff. He's all good to go. I tried to put him in a pose to kind of show off some of the uh, various points of articulation to, to highlight what um, you can do with these in terms of posability and whatnot, and to show off some of the assorted detail that gets put into the kit as it, it gets built up. Uh, in terms of what is out of the kit and what I added, the I had talked about the uh, Gundam marker earlier and how with these you could actually go through them without having to do any kind of uh, painting if you so choose. I did do a few things. The black marks you see, those are all with my uh, Gundam marker to bring out some detail. As he comes around, you will see on the front there are two yellow vents on each leg. I painted those in to match the shoulders and I did the little red marker here on each of his uh, pectoral plates, I guess you would call them. And that was it for the figure. Um, you know, very simple, maybe, uh, you know, half an hour just looking at him, trying to figure out where exactly I wanted to add some color. Uh, the guns, I did a little bit more work on uh, this sort of fold-up crazy shotgun he has. I painted the pump black, uh, the shoulder rest black. I did a black wash and coming around on his uh, smaller gun here, uh, same thing. Uh, black wash, some gun to marking, uh, a little bit of aluminum, um, what I guess would be the uh, breech or something of the uh, loading mechanism. But I also added extra decals. Um, those are uh, dry rub decals that I had left over from other uh, Gundam kits. Uh, one great thing with these uh, Gundam kits, you get loads of uh, decals with some of them. They come in water slide, uh, self-adhesive, and these uh, dry rub ones. These dry rub ones are a little finicky to get on because you lay it on there and you rub the backing and it transfers onto the piece. Uh, but they do look great once they're on there. So I've always kept all those extras. And actually, if you watch the uh, episode I did on the uh, AMT um, Scamp, Valiant Scamp, uh, some of those little accessory warning label type things, those were all uh, extra Gundam uh, decals that I had kept. So great source of extras if you're you know, interested in getting into these that you can use for, for anything else. Uh, there were a few spare parts with these because of redundancies between the parts trees. Uh, most notably the PC connectors, which give the joints their magic. You always end up with extras of these. These are great to hold on to. Uh, if you ever have a kit where, um, you know, one of those pieces cracks or breaks or wasn't molded correctly, it's great to keep your extras so you, you can salvage and move forward. Um, but that said, I, I've never had that sort of a problem with a kit, so it's just nice having them if uh, the need should arise. So, I'm just going to let them go around and, uh, you know, check them out. You can see the uh, color separation between the different molding sprues. And uh, again, if you can, I know I only put one slide in there of a leg before and after the Gundam marking. Uh, and it was uh, the panel liner marking. And it was a little difficult to see because of photography and lighting and the, the color of the pieces. But um, if you look at it now and, and try in your head to... Uh, do an imaginative delete of those little black markings, then you would still see that you could build this right out of the box and still have something that looks really great. And that's the final point I want to make is some people who are, you know, really deep into uh, Gundam building, they, they will airbrush everything and use metallic paints and really get exhaustive with uh, the detailing and the build. Uh, for me, I look at it a little bit differently, as I had said in the beginning. I look at these as a, a nice 
step away from what I normally do with models, with, with all the, the spraying and brush painting and whatnot, and get the chance to just build something. So particularly in winter, since I spray in my garage, it's cold. Uh, I don't feel like trying to heat up the whole garage to do a little spraying, so I take out one of these guys. And the smaller ones in particular, because the kits are not that expensive, $20, $25, what have you, sometimes um, on Amazon, like where I got this one, you'll, you'll see them on sale for like $15. So, you know, keep one on the shelf. You get a cold day or, you know, rainy day, whatever, or you just want a break from, from painting, uh, okay, you can crack one of these out. And if, if you have, like, like I said, one of those, you know, rainy, cold days where you, you just want to, you know, hang out and, and do your hobby for an afternoon, this could be a one day, uh, build for you. Um, you know, I always build a little bit slower because I really like to, you know, look at my stuff and appreciate the parts and whatnot. But if you just want to, you know, kick back and have something very casual to do, um, great thing to consider. And, uh, yeah, there you go. So a lot of fun. And I hope the uh, JPEGs really showed you what uh, building one of these, uh, what kind of experience would be like. And... Buy a gun the model. Hey, they're a lot of fun. <laughs> so um, my son actually gave me a master grade uh, level kit for uh, Christmas. So I will be building that uh, at some point. Who knows when, but, um, you know, got it on the shelf, like I said. And uh, it looks to be a really cool one. So um, with that in mind, that's part of the reason why I've done this. Not just because it was cold, but I figure this being a little bit simpler. Uh, it was a great way to do a video to introduce you to these uh, this genre of models if you have not already uh, taken the leap with them, but also to show you a cool build, and it is a pretty cool build. So I will call it quits at that. And once again, thank you for watching, and if you like it, if you enjoyed the video, uh, found it a benefit, please like, subscribe. Uh, and, uh, you know, this way other people can see it and let them know. So that's all for now. And uh, until the next time. So I'll let this guy go around again and, uh, have fun building.